Hello and welcome to Infinity. Now we're going to have a look at gradients brought from the hue, saturation and luminosity uh, direction. And the question is, can you do gradients from them and are they useful? We'll start off with the luminosity gradient and in fact we will go to View, Studio and Info Panel. So we're going to use to look at this. And in here I've got HSL here. So we can very simply, uh, if you click on that little thing up there, you can set it there so we can see what the gradient is looking like. So the first one is quite simply a straightforward gradient. If we go to the gradient tool here to look at this and then we can see what the gradient is here and we've got this literally going from over here black to over here white. And you can do a simple gradient like that. And if we bring this over here so we can see it next to it, let's put it down there. Then if we move the cursor from one end to the other, you can see luminosity just goes up steadily to a steady rate, get the 50% mark and it luminosity is 50. And it goes along here and there are three quarters, it's 75. So this is a nice steady and a very easy gradient to do. You just drag out the gradient and that's what you've got. There is one other way of doing it that I know of, maybe there's more, and that is like this. So now here we're going from black to a colour, so saturated colour here, which is red, which you can see there is just red up, everything else down. And then from the red, saturated down to white. This is like you might get with the HSL here, the luminosity here, which goes one way it goes to the white and the other way it goes to black and in the middle it is the saturated version. So that's what you've got here, but it gives the same thing. If you move across here, the luminosity down below does exactly the same thing and goes all the way across. The only difference is, is that the saturation here in this one, the saturation is zero in here. I've got the saturation is 100%. So, because I'm using it as 100% saturated colour here, so this sort of defines that. So if you have need for hue and saturation at the same time, this can have an effect. So let's have a look at that in the picture. And let's put that down there. And we'll take a gradient. Just draw, sorry, a rectangle or rectangle over it so it doesn't lose the gradient. Go to the gradient. And we'll go from drive from the bottom to the top. There we go. And you can change the that end there either by going up to here or you can click on a node and change the values here. And what we can do here is we can go down here and try things. The most common thing to do, go to something like overlay or soft light. Then you can see the before and after the effect that this is happening. You can use the reverse up here and put the, way, the other way around. In this case, darker at top is, works better. And this is commonly used for compensating for skies. And of course, you can then adjust with this. And you can see as you're moving, because actually it's darker at the bottom here, you're shifting the balance of light up and down so you can find the right place for it. Okay. Luminosity, by the way, down here, if you try going to the luminosity gradient here, sorry, the luminosity uh, blend mode, you're going to get this. Something you might note about this is that actually there's a lot of grey in it, which goes, ah, maybe you can do something like go to here and do a control uh, J to duplicate and shift click there to connect that, control G to group it, and then go down to a contrast blend mode here and use that because the gray is transparent. It's only using the color from here. So from here where the, the color is going to be transmitted downwards, but the blended, but the rest isn't. So you get here as a, an effect. So this is strong soft light overlay or even try one of the other contrast blend modes. When you try a, something like this, it's a bit heavy, then 
bringing the opacity down can help with that. So you can get sort of a interesting effect here. This has made this stronger, even the opacity a bit lower on that. So before and after, just a little bit of an effect there, increase the effect with the opacity. Anyway, there we go, that's luminosity. What about saturation? It's a little bit trickier, but not too bad. So here we go to the gradient tool, and here we've got from red to grey. Again, you can set that up here. And here you've got fully saturated. Let's bring the info panel back over here. So at this end here, S is 100% up here, and gradually goes down at the 50% part. It's about 50%. You know, by the time you've got down to here, it's about you know the three quarters of the way. Yeah, it's about 25%. So it's a nice steady decline there. And we can make use of that. We can also get, if I go to the next one here, this is actually going to tra to transparency to see that. I'm going to go to document and transparent background so you can see that this is here. So if I now go downwards here, you can see the saturation again is going down steadily and luminosity is steady at 50% here. So it's another way of doing that. So if I go to this one here, draw a rectangle again. That's gone back to that one, but that's okay. Let's put this over back over here and go to the gradient tool. And we'll just make use of this one here. So I'll take say the top one there, we'll make that red. And the bottom one here, we'll turn down the opacity. So make that transparent. And now what we do is go down to the blend modes here and go to the saturation blend mode. And the, here it takes the top layer here, the rectangle here is taking the saturation. So at the bottom, there's no saturation. So because it's taking it as a low level, but the, so the saturation is in, in a gradient down here. A bit high at the moment, very simply turn this down and you can then add saturation more at one end. And of course, always with this, you can take the center point then drag that up and down, or you can of course put extra points on the gradient. Again, common thing to do in landscape is to put things which are closer to you as higher saturation because things fade off into the distance. Thirdly, and most trickily, is hue. This is a bit of a funny one because actually if we go to if we go to this which is a color wheel. We can see here that it's the hue changes as we go round. In other words, it's measured by angle, which is this here, so 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and so on. So we're now not measuring in 0 to 100%, measuring 0 to 360 degrees. So with the hue gradient, here we've got red to cyan, which means red to cyan here, so that's 180 degrees. Because if you go all the way around, if you went from red to there, you go kind of like minus that much, and you certainly couldn't do red to red. So let's do that. And if we bring up the info panel, then if we look at the hue here, Hue zero. Why is hue zero? Hue zero is red. And it goes along to here. And watch what happens. See, saturation is, is changing here, not hue. But if I go to the middle, bing, see the hue just suddenly changes to 180 degrees, which is the cyan. So in other words, it's solid red all the way up to here, and that cyan all the way up to here. And it's the saturation that's making the fade happen not the hue. But if you want the hue to change? So a way to look at this is try to understand what's going on here. We've got a basic graph 
here. So let's get that. This is the horizontal position across the gradient, and this hue is there. So in other words, what's happened, it's gone along here, it's zero at the bottom here, then stepping up immediately to that, and that's not a linear hue that we want to get. So let's try something else. Let's go from red to, this is spring green here, so in other words I'm going from red around to this one here. So it's just off the cyan to see what happens. And so if we now do the same thing, what we find is that the we've got a, a like kind of S curve here, yeah, going up to 150 degrees there instead of this step. So in other words, this step here has softened a bit here. And if you went even closer to cyan, you can see how quickly it has it's gone off, even just turning back 30 degrees. So that's kind of interesting. You can see across here. Watch what happens as we move across here. Hue so starts gently to move up as we go along. So around about the 25% market, hue is only 11. But as we go towards the middle, it starts going up faster and faster and faster. And then it starts slows down a bit until you get near the top. And now it's only churning, turning very, very slowly. So that's that S curve happening there. And if we want to like a steady change, that's maybe not so great. OK, let's try something else again. So this time we're going to have multiple gradients. Let's have a look at this. So we've got this rectangle here. Get rid of that, double that. And now we're going from red to green a third of the way, blue a third of the way. In other words, doing it in thirds. So in other words, we've got a gradient from here to here, then from here to here, and then from here to here and see what that looks like. And what we get here is kind of a wobbly line, because what's actually happening is this S curve is happening three times. There's an S curve here, an S curve here, and an S curve here. It's slightly angular because I was taking points when I drew this graph. I literally measured along here. And then I built a spreadsheet, and the spreadsheet was used to create the graph. And then, OK, what if you add extra points in between? What if you add the, the yellow, the cyan, and the magenta? And if we do that, now we get pretty much a straight line. There will be a slight ripple in there, but this, so this gives us, if you want a hue gradient, this kind of thing. So what's that going to look like? Well, let's actually take this gradient here. Control C to copy that. Go over to the picture here. Don't need the last one. And back down there. Paste this in. And just shape this out. We'll put this up to here. And put this down to here. So now we're going literally from naught to 360 degrees horizontally across the picture, then go to normal, and two. So now it's taking the hue from that rectangle as you go across. And what we got is this blend across here of hue. And this is kind of interesting, because if you want to have a some kind of like pop art effect and, and do that, you can see the way that you can do that. What else happens here? Well, the saturation is solid all the way through, so that just turns the saturation up. Colour combines that, that makes solid all the way through, but now you've got the changing colours, because it uses the hue and saturation of the top level. And luminosity, uh, that's a bit strange, I don't know what you'd use that one for. And then you go up to here to overlays and things like that, and you maybe want to do something like that sometimes. Anyway, there we go, a bit longer than usual, sorry about that but that was covering the gradients within hue, saturation and luminosity, and a little bit about how you might use them. Thank you very much for watching.